your Massachusetts real estate market update for October 31st, 2022. So in this video, we're gonna talk about single family and condo data for last week, as well as the month of October. We're also gonna talk about interest rates, a little bit more steadiness in the interest rate market, but we're gonna talk about some big things that are happening this week that could be a huge factor in regards to future interest rates. Then we're gonna talk about how housing prices in Massachusetts is down. But there's a catch to that one, so you got to watch and find out. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I am a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a 1,000 houses, and I'm one of the top agents in the state of Massachusetts. If you have questions, then I'm going to be your resource. And if you love real estate data specifically to Massachusetts, make sure you slam that like button as well as hit that subscribe button below. So moving on to the single-family market. We currently have 5,417 single-family homes currently on the market in the state of Massachusetts. Big thing to note here is that in inventory actually decreased when we compare it to last week. And the number, however, of homes when you compare it to this time last year and this time this year in regards to the amount of inventory available to home buyers actually increased even though inventory decreased last week. Kind of crazy, right? So even though homes went down, we actually, the amount of homes in between those two time periods went up by 178 units. In other words, we have 1,194 more single family homes on the market today than we did at the same same time last year. So this is a great time for buyers to buy just because there's a lot more inventory on the market. We saw 957 newly listed properties that came on the market. Now the average amount of new listings in September and October was 1,046 units. And when we compare it to the same week last year, this week last year we had 966 newly listed single family homes that came on the market. So when we compare last year at 950 or 966 and this year's 957, we're pretty darn close to year over year data there so yeah the decrease in inventory wasn't because of new listings so that means it had to be because of properties that went under agreement so let's take a look at that there were 1095 single family homes that went under agreement this week and when we compare it to the last four weeks we've had a rolling average of 985 units so this was a pretty large increase where we saw that the under agreements just shot up there was some great activity in our market and this is actually what explains the decrease in the amount of inventory that we had when we compare it to this time uh, last week. So we had 1,112 single family homes sell last week. Now again, as expected at the end of every single month, this is when we ex expect to see a huge surge of sales activity because it's just cheaper for you to close at the end of the month. Your closing costs are less expensive. That's why everybody tries to do it at the end of the month. But 1,112 units is more than double than we had uh, just last week. Now the average sale price was $600 $181,000 and the median sales price was $545,000. And then that months of inventory, months of inventory being how we gauge how hot is the market. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. Anything from five to seven months is an equal market. So months of inventory actually increased in the single family market to 1.51 months worth of inventory compared to last week's 1.49 months. And I know I've said it and I continue to be a broken record, but this trailing indicator is not a really great indication of what is going on in the market. It is showing that it's a lot hotter than it really is. Is. Um, when you look at it and from a two month data perspective, it goes up into that three month range. So it really is a great time for buyers to buy because they've had a lot more selection from houses compared to any time pretty much last year, uh, number one. And then number two reason being that it's just not an absolutely crazed market. Uh, you have buyers getting some pretty good deals. I actually just recently put a property under agreement where it was a condo where the builder actually is paying six months of condo fees and this is after we got him pretty substantially off his asking price so there are some really good values out there let's just jump into that condo market in the condo market we have 2779 units that are currently on the market now this is a 75 unit decrease um, from just last week so we're now about 14 units off at the same inventory level as we had last year so inventory is about equal in the condo market and if you've been watching the video you've noticed and known that our condo inventory has actually been below for pretty much the whole entire year um, the same as the same num same time period back in 2021 so it's kind of a pretty interesting development that we need to keep our eye on we had 416 newly listed condos in the state of Massachusetts now the average amount of condos listed for both September and October was 485 units so this is about 14 percent below that average number definitely something we want to keep our eye on in inventory levels because the condo market 
market continues to be the weaker market segment in Massachusetts. So if all of a sudden we see a decrease in inventory and our sales continue to increase, then it might just kind of even out in that market. We had 406 condos go under agreement and the average for uh, September and October again was 388 units. So this is about 5% more than the average we've seen for the last two months. We had 460 condos closed last week, which again, it's the end of the month. So we're going to see a closing surge here completely to be expected. Now the average sale price was $614,000. Meanwhile, the median sales price was $499,450. And then that months of inventory, months of inventory actually decreased in the condo market down to 2.13 months versus last week's 2.23 months. Again, I, I say this, I know I just said it in the single family market. If we were to look at it from a two month trailing average rather than the four month trailing average, which is normal in these months of inventory, we would see this months of in inventory more than increase uh, in the 4.6 months of inventory range. So the condo market continues to be the weaker market segment in the state of Massachusetts where you as a buyer can ultimately get the best deal out there. The inventory decreases is definitely an interesting development and definitely something that we need to continue to keep our eye on because inventory just continued to decrease, decrease, decrease last year and going into the winter months, we saw record low inventory levels. So is this just an outlier? Is this going to be a continual trend? This is a development that we just, we need to keep our eye on as we look at this month over month data. And hey, by the way, if you're liking this data, if you love hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button um, but on to the single family market and what happened in the whole entire month of October we saw 3,449 single family homes close in the state of Massachusetts for the month of October for an average sales price of $673,000. Now this $673,000 represented a month over month decrease in the average sale price of 4.7% with a year over year average sales price increase of 4.3%. Now October of 2022 saw a 25% decrease in the amount of homes sold when we compare it to October of 2021. And as a quick side note, if we were to go back, we'd have to actually go back to October of 2012 in order to find a time period where the average amount of units that sold in October was around this level. So in October 2012, we saw 3,438 single family houses sell. Now I'm, I know what you're thinking, well, oh my gosh, this decrease in inventory, we're running up to 2007, 2008 market crash. So let's take a look at October of 2007 when we saw 2,885 single family homes so sold. So, you know, we're still well above those levels that we saw that led us into that crash. Truly, these are 2012 sales numbers. This is not bad. 2012 was a great year. So in seeing this sales inventory, the sales activity, I should say, it's still nothing that I'm worried about. For the condo market, we saw 1,341 condo sell in the state of Massachusetts with an average sales price of $611,000. Now this was a 3.8% increase over the average sale price in September of 2022 and a 3.3% increase over the number that we saw back in October of 2021. Just kind of really interesting that we saw the average sales price actually increase from September to October in the condo market. And I really think that's because in September, the condo market in the Massachusetts just took a huge, huge beating. So this is a little bit of a rebound off of a month that just got really bloody for, for the condo market in the state of Massachusetts. Now in October of 2022, if we compare it to October, of 2021, we actually saw a 30% decrease in the amount of sales year over year. So it's like we've said, been saying this whole time, and it's completely to be expected. Our sales levels are very well off the absolute historical highs that we saw last year. So it's really a tough comparison. It makes these statistics look a lot worse than our market really is because um, we're taking the best time period and we're comparing it to kind of a normal time period. But let's move on to the mortgage market. In the mortgage market, interest rates continue to be stable in that low 7% range for a 30-year fixed mortgage. Again, it's important to note that if you're going for other types of mortgage products, like an adjustable rate mortgage, you can get interest rates a lot lower than what we're seeing 
for the 30 year fixed averages. But we've got some really big news and some developments that are moving forward uh, in the next two weeks. So this week we have the Fed coming out with their federal uh, funds rate, most likely going to be an increase. The markets believe it's going to be another 75 basis point increase. But a lot of the people that I talk to, they don't necessarily think interest rates are really going to go up from that. The big thing is next week when the consumer price index numbers come out, that is really what we need to continue to look at. Because when you look at these graphs, you can actually see that the last two spikes that we saw on the 10-year treasury rate was actually around the consumer price index information. So it's the CPI data that is going to be released next week. That is what we need to keep our eye on if we're going to continue to analyze what's going on in the interest rate market. So home prices have gone down in Massachusetts, I say. Yep, I'm going to be like every single other analyst out there talking about how home prices are going down and oh my goodness, the crash is happening, yada, yada, yada. Okay, you heard me say, but let's just take a look at this graph and look at the data that they're looking at. So this shows that the average sale price year to date in 2022, right? In June, we hit the pricing peak of $791,000. And now in October, the average sale price is $673,000. So yes, if that is the statistics that I'm looking at, the average sale price has gone down 15%. I could grab so many headlines with that number, right? But let's just take a look at some historical analysis here. Let's take a look at 2021, where in June of 2021, prices peaked at $716,000. Then in October of 2021, which was the low point, prices hit about $645,000. So this means in the same exact time period back in 2021, housing prices came down 10%. Can you imagine if I was the idiot last year that was screaming at the top of my lungs that home prices went down when in fact, when you look at the whole entire year, the average sale price for a single family home in the state of Massachusetts actually went up 15%. But yes, I can take a small snippet of data and somehow I can claim that home prices went down by 10%. Kind of crazy, right? So yes, prices are down in Massachusetts. I can say that like every other idiot out there currently saying it because it's true. If you look at a small little snippet of data, I can say that prices are down. Just like if at the same exact time last year, I could have said prices were down when they were in fact Yes, they were down in that small little snippet of data size, but housing prices still went up by 15% year over year in 2021. Again, there's no doubt that the home prices are starting to level off. And that's what we're seeing. And you can see it in the year over year October number, right? Remember, go back to that, where the average sale price in October of 2022 compared to 2021 was like three to 4%, okay? So yeah, again, you're starting to see these levels level off with, which is exactly what we need in the marketplace. This is why the Fed is increasing their interest rates like they are. We're going to continue to look at this data. We're going to continue to analyze this data. We're not going to make any quick conclusions about this data because at the end of the day, the historical trends are very, very, very important. History, it has a way of repeating itself, and that is what we need to continue to look at. Should you have any questions about the real estate market, do you want to talk about your own specific real estate goals, then I would love to chat with you. Real estate's my passion. I absolutely love it. I would love to hear what your goals are. Now, as a quick heads up, I don't work with everyone. In order to make sure that I continue to provide you know, exceptional customer service, I, just, I can't work with everybody. So I would love to chat with you, see if our goals align, see if we can you know, work together and, and ultimately see if, if our timelines match up because there are some times where it seems like I'm working with too many people which is why I ultimately limit here. But I would just love to chat with you. All my contact information is in the description below. Hit me up. Oh, it seems like email is the favored choice is uh, a way for somebody to get a hold of me. Um, and then if you have any questions or comments about any of this market data, you take the time to watch this video. I'm always going to take the time to respond to it. So just throw it in the comments section. I always really appreciate um, anyone and everyone you know talking about it with questions or their thoughts or their comments. Because um, at the end of of the day, an informed person is a powerful person. So until next week.